On this week's political figure episode, if it walks like a duh, nope. Uh, the senator who's like a roll of duct tape patching, nope. Uh, that one's not gonna work either. Maybe there's like a superhero Darkwing Duck ju You know what? I'm just gonna forgo the opening joke on this one. This one's about Tammy Duckworth, okay? A lot of Tammy Duckworth was born March 12th, 1968 in Bangkok, Thailand. Her father, Franklin Duckworth, was a U.S. Army and U.S. Marine Corps veteran who served both in World War II and Vietnam. And on top of that immediate and impressive military lineage, her family has a long history of military service to the United States dating all the way back to the Revolutionary War, making Tammy a daughter of the American Revolution. After her father's military service, he worked with the United Nations for a while, so obviously she moved around a tad as a child before they finally settled in Honolulu when she was 16 years old. She would go on to graduate from the University of Hawaii in 1989 with a bachelor's in political science. In 92, she'd get her master's in international affairs from George Washington University's Elliott School of International Affairs. And in the process of getting her master's, she decided to continue her family's long history of military service by joining the Army Reserves. By 1992, she'd become a commissioned officer with the Army Reserves and decided she wanted to fly helicopters because she's a fucking badass and that was one of the few combat positions open to women in the early 90s. By the mid-90s, she was in the Illinois Army National Guard. And by the early 2000s, she was working on her PhD in political science at Northern Illinois University. However, she had to put her PhD aspirations on hold in 2004 because Saddam Hussein didn't have any weapons of mass destruction and George Bush needed to blow up his country about it. And while flying missions in Iraq, an Iraqi insurgent used an RPG to relieve her of both of her lower extremities, break her arm, and burn her very badly. Chopper was badly damaged from, you know, the rocket-propelled grenade, and it crashed in a field with everybody on board being injured, but her injuries were by far the worst, practically fatal. But I told you she's a badass, so she decided that they weren't gonna be fatal. And despite both legs being amputated and losing considerable mobility in her arm, she survived. Now normally, in the course of service, when you misplace half the limbs you joined the army with, you get a medical discharge, which she was offered. But once again, I don't know how to stress this enough, She's a fucking badass. She's like, nah, put me back in, coach. And would continue serving with the Illinois Army National Guard for another decade, retiring as Lieutenant Colonel in 2014. Her civilian political service career began in 2006 when after a failed congressional bid, she was appointed as the Director of Illinois' Department of Veterans Affairs. While serving in this position, she did receive some allegations that maybe she wasn't the best boss. She was sued for wrongfully terminating one employee and some abuse and intimidation of another employee. These suits were dismissed twice with the option to refile, which they refiled three times. Finally, the state settled for like 26 grand in 2016 with no admission of wrongdoing. And then the complainants decided after they said they'd settle that they didn't want to settle and tried to undo the settlement. And the judge is like, I'm fucking tired of you. You've got 21 days to sign the settlement or you get nothing. Take that all for what you will. I've never worked for her. I can't say. She seems like a relatively uh, nice and empathetic person, but she's also a female W amputee army vet. So her being a little coarse, I guess, could be conceivable. In 2009, President Barack Obama appointed her to be the Assistant Secretary of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs for the United States Department of Veteran Affairs. Business card must be a full goddamn sheet of computer paper. During her time at the VA, she worked with other agencies to help end veteran homelessness, work with issues facing female veterans and Native American veterans. She stepped down from that position in 2011 to pursue elected office running for Congress in Illinois' 8th District. During the campaign, her opponent, incumbent Republican Joe Walsh, criticized her for talking too much about her military experience, saying that real heroes who served their country, it's the last thing they ever want to talk about is what they did in the military. Those comments didn't win him any favors from anyone, and uh, he lost to her 55% to 45%. In 2013, while in Congress, there was a government shutdown, and she returned her salary for that month to the United States Treasury in solidarity with furloughed federal workers who were not getting paid while her congressional colleagues were. For the 2016 election, she decided to mount a bid for Senate against Republican incumbent Mark Kirk. Mark Kirk decided he, too, would give shit-talking her and her family's military credentials a shot, saying in a debate, Oh yeah, I forgot, your family sailed all the way from Thailand to serve under George Washington in the American Revolution. And that bold strategy resulted in her defeating him with 55% of the vote. 
again. And in American politics in 2016, uh, the shrimp boat was crashing into the dock, so to speak. And Tammy decided that it was time for her to come down and try on her ass kicking legs, instantly becoming one of the most effective senators in history, especially as a freshman and sophomore senator. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that she's gotten a lot of her own bills passed. Well, she has sponsored and co-sponsored a fair amount of bills. Her true effectiveness has really been in affecting other bills, either positively or negatively. She's really good at finding co-sponsors for bills, especially influential and bipartisan co-sponsors. She's been really effective at moving bills out of committee, which is where the vast majority of bills are sent to die. And she's moved the needle on a lot of bills that affect everything from veteran services and affairs to disability services and rights, to transportation, to parental rights, to parental rights about transportation. In fact, the FAM Act that requires those breastfeeding booths you see in airports, that was her. She was also the first sitting senator to have a child while serving in the Senate and got a rule change so senators are allowed to bring their infants under a year old to work with them, making her baby the first infant to ever be on the Senate floor. In addition to that being a first, I should mention that just about everything she does is among the first in some form or fashion. Being an Asian American, disabled female veteran mother, she checks a lot of boxes. You put enough of those boxes together and uh, she will be the first at just about everything she does, which I want to make very clear is awesome. I'm not making fun of that at all. She is a poster child for inspiration. She's also been very vocal about her positions, like vehemently and vocally opposing incompetent characters from The Handmaid's Tale to the Supreme Court. And when Trump tried using veterans and military members in an attack against Democrats during a government shutdown, she out loud called him cadet bone spurs and said she will not be lectured by a five-time deferment draft dodge on taking care of military families and veterans. When that's coming from somebody with that level of authority on that particular topic, it's just best for you to sit down and shut up. And some argue that her biggest accomplishment so far is not legislation she got passed, but legislation she killed. Rounding up nearly half of all the senators in the Senate to bully House Resolution 620 into dying in the House before it ever even had a chance to make it to the Senate. Saying that they in the Senate would vote against any version of the bill, no matter how it was amended. And that pressure ended up killing the bill that would have effectively kneecapped the Americans with Disabilities Act. In addition to all the shit she's done in Congress and the Senate, in 2016, she was also vetted as a potential running mate for Joe Biden. But because the Democrats are stupid, they chose Kamala Harris instead, who nobody fucking likes. Seriously, how do you get a better VP candidate or candidate in general than Tammy? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that she's like my ideal candidate. Like there's definitely some policies I wish she was more progressive on. Policy issues that are top of the list for her aren't necessarily top of the list for me. But all of that's irrelevant. Objectively speaking, as an all around candidate, candidate, you don't get anything better than Tammy fucking Duckworth. A double amputee disabled combat vet already gives you clout and cred like way the fuck up here. It is untouchable clout and cred. You can't shit talk that as an opponent. Look at her election history. Every time they've tried, she won in a landslide against incumbents. When Trump shit talked John McCain's military history, he lost Arizona and they elected a Democratic senator, or at least one sort of pretending to be a Democrat. You don't get more support the troops, support the vets than Tammy, and she's got the history to prove it. And that buys you a lot of goodwill with a lot of swing voters who prioritize national defense and service members. And then she's a woman and a minority, which resonates great with women and minorities. And it's pretty tough for people to assert that she is being selected simply for being a woman or a minority because she's got the fucking credentials to back it up. Once again, disabled combat vet and a fucking PhD. She's worked in state veterans affairs. She's worked in national veterans affairs. She's been a congressperson and a senator. She's objectively more qualified than probably 95% of the old white dudes in Washington. And you know, she's a Gen Xer. She's a little bit younger. She wasn't personally alive for the birth of Jesus. But as dedicated as the Democrats are to putting a woman in the White House, they are more dedicated to making sure that that woman is the most unlikable person they can possibly find. However, had they picked anybody other than Kamala Harris, I think most of us would probably be rooting for Joe Biden to kick the bucket, so... Maybe that went into their decision-making process. Whatever the case may be, she's proven to be a solid leader with an impeccable resume. And I think we can look forward to seeing her do a lot more big things in Washington. And I'd definitely not count her out if she ever decides to make a run for president. Some of these puns are fucking unavoidable and that one is not my fault. Anyway, Tammy's a badass and I am done now before I get myself in more trouble. Goodbye.